Hello everybody, welcome back to Theonos and um, today I have a very interesting message. Why does God keep your enemies close? This is for any person that, you know, when you, when you live your life and there are people who hurt you, there are people who um, causes things that might cause pain, that might cause rejection, that, you know, some people might even get to a place where they want to destroy certain things in your life where, what you have, that you have built. And, you know, sometimes like a year, even two years goes by and you're like, you know, but these people are still around. I, st I still see them everywhere. It's almost like if I'm praying, when I'm praying, you know, God is like, I'm praying to God to like, you know, just keep these people out of my sight, just keep these people out of my life. Um, but it seems like God keeps these people around. And we sometimes ask the question, why? But God, why do you keep my enemies around? Now, recently we had a, we had a few interviews on our channel. We had one with Rieta McPherson. If you haven't seen it, you're welcome to go watch that on our Theonos Live Training YouTube channel. We had one with Joel Kombold. And um, we spoke about some interesting things on the one with Jacques Kombold. We spoke about how the, you know, how pursuing fame, how pursuing performance can have a negative impact on your soul. And with uh, Rieta McPherson, I spoke about the dark shadow and how, how important it is to embrace the dark shadow. But I remember right before that, I did a session on Jesus said, if you do not understand this, how will you understand anything else? And we spoke about Mark chapter 4, and I said I'm going to continue with this series. And I've done this series before, but this time I'm taking a bit of a different angle um, on, on what we're going to do. So today we're going to look at it again. We, today we're going to look at Mark chapter 4 again. But we're specifically going to focus on answering the question, why does God keep my enemies around? Why is it, why is it that these people keep staying in my life? Now, um, we're going to start with Mark chapter 4, verse 13 again. Um, I just want to thank every single person again that's contributing financially to the ministry. We really appreciate your, your contribution and your contribution helps us to do what we are called to do. It helps me to um, help others. We, um, my, uh, Theonos stands for the mind of God. We help people with their thinking, with their emotions, and we're really helping other people to prosper in their lives, to do what God has called them to do. I'm, I'm busy with an off-camera session now with people on, on discovering your calling, discovering your authentic self. And um, because of your giving, you are allowing us to keep on doing these things. So um, if you want to contribute financially, our banking details will be on the screen. And... Um, I do believe, or you can know, let me rather say that you can know that, you know, your your giving goes a long way in helping us, helping other people in what we are called to do, which is helping people with their mindset and their emotions. And also want to ask you to like, to subscribe. Um, we are trusting God to go to a thousand subscribers and your subscription can help us with that. If you are watching this video later in life and we're already at a thousand subscribers, then we are trusting for 2000. So um, you subscribing really helps us. And if you believe this video can help other people, please share it. And we want to, I want to draw your attention to this. I want you just to, um, you know, take some time. We are we are living in a very fast-paced world where everybody wants to rush everything. But I want to encourage you to take some time in listening to this message and, and the following messages to come um, on this on this series, so that you can so that you can really understand what I'm trying to articulate and what God is trying to say to you through these messages. So Mark chapter four, the Bible says, and Jesus said to them, "Do you not understand this parable?" How would you understand all the parables? And I remember when I first read the scripture, I was kind of like, there's like a very eye-opening thing for me. And like Jesus is saying, if you don't understand this, how are you going to understand anything else? Now, imagine there's something very important in your life that you want to achieve. And, you know, you're, you're, you, you, have a, you have a heart, you have a desire to achieve something and you go to a coach. And the coach tells you what I'm about to tell you. If you don't understand this, anything else that I'm telling you will not make sense. And this is basically what Jesus is saying. And he's speaking in a parable. Now, Jesus uses a lot of parables to, um, 
to explain things. It's, it's, it's Jesus actually had a very creative way of teaching and God is a creator. So just to say this creativity is a part of God and Jesus speaks in a, a lot of creative ways and he spoke in a lot of parables and he said, if you don't understand this parable, you will not understand any of the parables that I'm about to, that, that I'm going to teach you or even have taught you. So we've been speaking a lot about the conscious and the subconscious mind. And I'm just going to recap on that because this is extremely important to understand. Your subconscious mind um, is responsible for 90 to 95% of your life. In your subconscious mind, you get things like your emotion. As a, emotion has a very big influence on your subconscious mind. Intuition, your core beliefs, your subconscious is what you believe at your core. And also habit. Habit is one of the best ways and I can explain your subconscious mind. So where all your core beliefs are, where your feelings, your emotions, your desires, your habits, your intuition... Um, what you have built over the years is in your subconscious mind. And if something is in your subconscious mind, your body just starts doing it naturally. It's like when you first learn to drive a car, um, you, have to, you have to do it over and over and over, and then it just comes naturally. So whatever comes naturally, whatever comes habitually, that is what's in your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is built through repetition. So here we get the story in Mark chapter 4 where Jesus says, A sower goes out to sow. And um, this is in Mark chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Verse 3 says, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And um, in, in this parable, the soil is a can, can be a picture of your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And I, I believe the subconscious mind is a very, very big part of it. Now, as you sow anything into, into natural soil, the soil will take any seed that you give to it. But, but it, will, it will only give you the results of that seed. So you cannot sow one seed and expect something different to come up. You cannot sow the seed of a strawberry and then hope to harvest watermelons. It just won't work like that. But you can sow anything. So you can choose. You know, a lot of people say, yeah, but God gives us the ability to choose what we want. God gives you the ability to choose. Yes, but he doesn't give you the, uh, he doesn't give you the choice of the consequence. The consequence comes with the seed that you sow. So Jesus is explaining this. He's saying, in order to understand anything else I'm teaching you, you have to understand this parable, a sower goes out to sow. You have to understand that whatever you sow into your mind, or let me rather say, whatever you sow into your subconscious mind, that's how your life is going to turn out. There's no other way about this. This is why you get people, they listen to the same church, serve, or they go to the same church, they have totally different lives. They listen to the same sermon, they have totally different results. It's because of what the subconscious mind um, receives and emotionally you receive as well so if you want something to go into your subconscious mind repetition is very important but the emotion you connect to it is also very important so you have to get you you have to get emotionally involved with it it's not just about hearing it it's not just about being there it's not just about doing it repet uh, uh, repetitively although repetition is very very important when it comes to the subconscious mind you have to act you have to add emotion to it that's why it's important not to get offended. That's why, why it's important not to live in hate, in doubt, in fear, because those emotions will, will, will keep something in your subconscious. That's why it's important to have gratitude, even if you don't have something yet. Be grateful as if you have it, as Romans 4 verse 17 says. Be grateful for the things you already have. Live in joy, live in laughter, live in peace, because your emotions has, a, has, a, has an impact on your subconscious mind. So here in verse 4, and this is where I want to get to, it says, And it happened, as he sowed, that some fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. The birds of the air came and devoured the seed. Mark chapter 4, verse 14. In verse 14, he, he explains what he means by these birds. The sower sows the word. And verse 15 then says, And these are the ones by the wayside where the word, where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now, how does Satan take away the word? I believe one of the ways is definitely um, playing on your mind. 
He wants you to doubt the word of God. He wants you to question the word of God. He wants you not to believe it. So he takes it from your mind. But I do believe something else that Satan uses is other people. So you can, you, can, you can trust God for something, you can believe for something, you can work towards something. And when, the, and when Satan, according to him, the right people, obviously for you and for God, it's the wrong people, Mark, but according to Satan, he will send people that's right for him to take the word that God has stolen from you. And this is why it's so important to, to learn to live in unforgiveness and not to learn in to, and not to live in offense and in bitterness because like I said those emotions gets something to really stick into your subconscious mind so how you get emotionally involved in something is very important this is why it's important to learn to forgive this is why it's important to learn to let go now um Exercise, and I'm not speaking about going to gym exercise, I'm speaking about exercising your mind, exercising your emotions, exercising situations. So God can a lot of times use the situations that this, this doesn't mean God causes people to hurt you, this doesn't mean God causes bitterness, but he can use these situation to help, situations to help you to deal with anger, to help you to deal with bitterness. Because is if if we look at our energy level and our vib and our vibration level if we if we live in things like guilt unforgiveness shame bitterness offense our energy level and our vibration level is extremely low by something called the law of vibration uh, that says everything vibrates everything has frequency and if you get in contact with something that has a, that has the same frequency as you have it feels natural so people with a low vibration, low frequency, who continuously live in the, in the emotions of shame and guilt and fear, um, these people like to share negative news, they gossip, you will, you will see they normally flock together because, because they, their vibration kind of attracts each other. Now, I've said this many times, your mind is, is electric, your heart is magnetic. So what you think and what you feel, you will send out and you will draw to you at the same time so there's a lot of times people who causes this 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 negative influence in your life and if you don't know how to deal with it they steal and they snatch that seed so they cannot snatch the seed if the seed is buried deep because the bible here says because it was on the surface satan could steal it but if it's buried deep in belief they cannot steal it so how do you bury it deep you believe it repetitively and you add emotion to it so if 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 god gives you a word if you hear a word in church if you read the word a word in the scripture and god gives you something and you're like i believe it i repeat I, I repetitively read it confess it believe it i get emotionally involved with gratitude joy faith um I get involved with it, it gets buried deeper and deeper and deeper. Then a naysayer, somebody that says no to everything God says yes to, a doubter, a critical person, somebody wants to steal the seed, cannot, because it's now buried deep within. Uh, Corin Baccarin said, in the garden of your thoughts, the people you choose to water your soul determine whether you bloom or wither. So, it's important to make sure that the people you keep around you are people that encourages and um, helps you to do what God, encourages you to do what God has called you to do and encourages you um, to, stay, to stay true to the promise. I have this one person in my life that's very close to me. His name is Ari Duplessis and he probably listens to this video. Um, he always... Um, after 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 we spoke, after we speak over the phone, or a lot of, a lot of times when we speak on the phone, he says, um, "Just remember, I'm behind you," and he always says to me stuff like, "The best is yet to come." My pastor, Pastor Gerard, also says that to me all the time. The best is yet to yet to come. We're gonna make a big success, and we're gonna change a lot of lives. Those are the people that I want to involve them involve in my lives because they are watering the seed that has been planted. Alan Rufus said, the atmosphere you create within yourself is mirrored by the atmosphere you create around yourself. And just, just shows again that, this, that your surroundings has such a major influence. Now, you can, 
because I know you cannot always determine your surroundings. Sometimes there's family, work surroundings, and atmospheres you have to be in, and you don't know, and you cannot always physically take yourself out. That is why, if you understand the conscious and the subconscious mind, the conscious mind has an ability to reject things. I'm, I'm going to tell you now why God keeps people around. Okay, I just want to, I just want to lay the ground, the groundwork for this. Why does God keep people around? Um, or why does God keep your enemies close to you? We're going to get to that now. But the conscious mind can reject. It's like when you when you when you board an airplane, you don't have the right passport, um, or you don't have a ticket. They can tell you no, you cannot come on the plane. So that's what the conscious mind does. It decides what it accepts and what it rejects. But the subconscious cannot do that. If the conscious mind accepts something and it plants in the it plants it in the subconscious mind. The, your, your life is going to go in that direction. That's why it's very important to, 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 to be aware of what you think, what you believe, and what you get emotionally involved with. So if somebody tells you you're stupid and you decide, I'm not going to believe it, I'm not going to repeat it, and I'm not going to event, I'm not going to emotionally get involved with it, it throws it out. But if you believe, I'm, if you say, I'm going to believe it, I'm going to emotionally get involved in it, your subconscious mind is going to believe it. And then eventually you're going to start acting like a stupid person because that is who you believe you are. But if God says something to you, you believe it, you put it in, you get emotionally involved with it and it sticks. The seed cannot easily be snatched. Therefore, it's important not just to attend church, not just to read Bible, not just to watch messages like this, not just to say a prayer, but to make sure when you do it, to get mentally, emotionally involved with it and to do it in repetition. So the reason Satan causes people to hurt you, to um, to reject you, to... Um, to sow bad seeds in your life is because as soon as you get emotionally involved with it, it causes that energy and vibration to go down. It has an influence on your life. It has an influence on your mood. This is why emotional intelligence is so important so you can know how to manage and master your emotions. Because, uh, but um, Satan does those things to get to you because he wants, to, he, he, he wants your subconscious mind to be full of bitterness, to be full of hate, to be full of doubt. Now, we cannot, we cannot um, disallow those things or or make sure that they never come because they will come. We live in a world where disrespect is, where dishonor is, where people will hurt you, where where, where people because of their hurt they will hurt you. So we cannot totally run away from those things, but we can decide whether it goes into your subconscious mind or not. So. Um, I can choose. Do I do I do I allow what is said on the news to go into my subconscious mind, or do I allow what's what's happening in church to get into my subconscious mind? Is it is it the world, what the world says, or what God says that goes into my subconscious mind? I can decide. Well, that doesn't mean we shouldn't know what's going on in the world, or you know, it's wrong to watch news. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying you you can choose what you believe at the end of the day by what you think about what you do repet re uh, uh, in repetition and what you get emotionally involved with. So it's the people closest to you that will hurt you the most. And, and we've seen this over and over again. And, um, and I'm not saying all of, all, of, all of that is necessarily caused by the devil. Sometimes, it li sometimes it's life. Sometimes it might even be God who takes away people, who, who takes people from your life, things like that. Um, some people are sometimes just in your life for a season and that's God's will, but that's not what I'm talking about. You know, every single person that 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 leaves your life is not necessarily the devil hurting you or there to hurt you. You know, maybe it's just a season sometimes. You know, there are there are people in my life where God took me from one season to another season. And these people got very offended with me because because I said, you know, that, that this is what God called me to do for one season in my life. Now, go, now God, me, God called me for, for, sorry, for something in a different season and people got very angry with me. Um, that's, not, that's also not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to people who, ha, who really had a heart to hurt you. 
people who really had a heart to destroy you out of their insecurity, people who, who really had a heart to cause pain, people who really had those intentions. That's what I'm speaking about. So always remember in these environments, you have a decision what you allow to be planted in your subconscious and what you disallow. This is why Jesus said, if you do not understand this parable, if you do not understand that you have a decision, what you plant into the soil of your soul, and you have a decision what you don't plant every single day of your life, how are you going to understand everything else that I say? So when you when you live your life and you see people that used to hurt you, that are around all the time, and you're like, but God, I've asked you so many times. You know, I, I, it's not that I, it's not that I'm in unforgiveness. It's not that I'm bitter. It's just I don't want to see them the whole time. Why do you do this? The answer is in Psalm 23, verse five to six. The Bible says in verse five, "You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies." There we have it. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Not you prepare a table for me apart from my enemies. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Then, he, then it says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I am, um, and here we see it. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He keeps your enemy cl enemies close because God wants them to see how he anoints you, how your cup runs over and how goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life. So the reason why God keeps your enemies around is he wants your enemies to observe how you get blessed, how he blesses you, how he prospers you, how he increases you. Now, we don't do that to hurt them. Uh, we do that. Not, it's not that we, did, we do it. God does it. But that doesn't happen so that they can get hurt. That happens so that they can observe that God was really with you all the time. And it doesn't always happen immediately, but it always happens suddenly. So God sometimes takes a process to prepare you, but then he does something suddenly in your life. So if you have seen some of your enemies around you for years and years, then, um, then just know God is going to do it suddenly. And that even might cause them to get to repentance. So you don't pray for them to get hurt in the process because the Bible says the goodness of God leads people to repentance. If people can see the goodness of God in your life, they will repent. They will ask for forgiveness. God might even restore some relationships. I'm not saying he's going to, but he might. But God wants people to see the goodness of God in your life. I want to finish with this testimony. I am. Um, I started a, a, a business called Mind Prosperity, where I, where I, where I speak at businesses about the mind, the conscious and the subconscious mind, emotional intelligence, things like that. Um, and we recently rebranded, and our rebranding was one of the best experiences that I've ever had. The branding company, brand new, who did it was so professional and they were so good to me and I couldn't have asked for a better brand than what I have now with Mind Prosperity and when we got our business cards the next day I showed I, I gave my uncle one of my business cards and my and my uncle is a believer and is a great motivator in my life and um, he took the business card and he started to pray for my business and he anointed it with oil and he said to me, I must write on, I must write the date. It was the, it was the second of the eighth month, 2023. And he signed it. And he signed it because as a witness, the Bible says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses. The Bible uses witnesses for the, for the promise of God. And he prayed a blessing. And I, and I sent this to, to a friend of mine, uh, Natalie. And she said to me, you know, what's, you know, what's interesting about these numbers is that the word, uh, uh, the number two speak speak speaks about blessing and increase uh, the number eight speaks about new beginnings and in 2023 you see psalm 23 so it was this whole idea of increase something new is going to happen and then as i read through psalm 2023 again the scripture caught my attention so it was actually my uncle's prayer over my business that uh, that inspired this message because when I read that, God just told me that, you know, people, people, people who doubted your calling, 
people people who left people who um not left in the sense of like betrayal i'm not speaking about that um or, or i'm not speaking about people who left out of a good heart i'm speaking about betrayal i'm speaking about um you know people who went out to hurt you people people pe people who tried to snatch the seed that god tried to, to place in your heart people who spread stories about you so 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 that also happened and i'm not saying i'm not saying this to to complain about my life i'm really really very happy i'm saying this to help you because i know a lot of people face the same things um where they got hurt where they got betrayed where people doubted them where people even tried maybe to to um to get their business to fall down or get their ministries to fall down because you know we do get people who do who do things like that and God just said to me, every single person who doubted you, every single person who didn't believe what I'm going to do in your life, I'm going to, I'm going to prepare a table for you and not to hurt them, but as evidence of what God can do in your life. So I just want to tell you in this message today, number one, make sure people don't snatch the seed that God has given you. Keep that, keep that seed planted in your mind, in your heart, in your belief system. Keep that seed planted. And whenever there's hurt, make sure you forgive. Make sure you let go of bitterness because these emotions causes you to, to live in a low vibration. These things can happen, but we don't want to stay there. We don't want, we, we, we don't want, to, want to keep living in, that, in those emotions. When they come, it's natural, sometimes even necessary. We deal with them, we manage it. But we forgive, we let go, and we pray a blessing over people. And just know the reason God keeps your enemies close is He wants them to watch how you get blessed and how the goodness of God will have an influence in many people's lives. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for every single person that watched this message, that was influenced by this message. And I thank you, Father, that you will take this message, Father God, and plant it deep in the hearts of the people and that the seed will not be stolen but that people will get involved with the seed of the word that I've given them today and that you will do in their lives what only you can do in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says he wants to do 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. And we see this in Genesis 26 where the Bible says Isaac began to prosper 30-fold. He continued prospering 60-fold till he became very prosperous 100-fold. And that's my prayer and my desire for you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to see you guys again. And thank you for your participation. May God bless you and goodbye.